Hi, I am Mohammad Ghaffariani Asar, and in this video I will talk about the simplest form of a vacuum tube, which is a diode. I show you the internal construction of a vacuum tube diode, and I will explain the operation principle of uh, this type of diode. At the end, I will make a very simple circuit, a rectifier, and I will show you the response of this type of diode on the oscilloscope. All right, let's have a closer look. Here I have a double diode vacuum tube, which is uh, made of two diodes. So this is the first diode, and this one is the second diode. There is a metallic screen between them, um, which is connected to one of these pins. But uh, this pin is unused, as far as I know. Or maybe it's connected to earth or something, but it's not an active part, anyway. Um, each diode obviously has two active terminals, uh, so in total four of these pins are related to the active terminals of the two diodes. Each diode also has a heating element, so these two wires are white wires are the heating element of this diode. So in this case, the, the heating elements are connected in series. So one of the wires goes to the output pin, the other one is coming from underneath here, and it goes, it goes through the second heater element and then the other pin the other wire will go out uh, from the external pins so basically two pins are used to supply current to the both heater of the two diodes um, so the active part of the diode is actually in this center part so all the structure that you see is um, the positive polarity of um, this diode Basically, there is a metallic sheet with a half cylinder uh, on one side and there is another metallic sheet with another half cylinder. So when they put them together, then there will be a hollow cylinder in the, in the center of this structure and that is the positive polarity. Now inside this hollow cylinder, we have the cathode, which is another hollow tube goes inside this, uh, this part. And then the heater goes inside the cathode. So we have the heater then the negative polarity, and then the positive polarity, which is the whole structure that you see here. One thing that I should mention regarding the, the tube um, is the degree of vacuum inside this type of tube. Um, it has really hard vacuum uh, inside. So in comparison, for example, atmospheric pressure has 101 uh, kilopascal, around that number, if you buy a normal vacuum pump, you may reach to 0.2 Pascal. In this case, the pressure is around 100 to 130 micropascal. It's, it's really hard. So during production, basically, they suck out air from this port. And uh, at the same time, they, um, they heat this, all this structure, both by a, by a general heater and also by an induction heater so that all the gases that are absorbed through this metallic part or these other compo components, it's released and it's sucked away from, from this port. After that, we have another, t another element here, which is called the getter. Um, basically, this one is made of um, nickel strip and inside it, there is uh, some sort of uh, reactive metal, which is kind of a component of a barium. Now, during production, basically using an induction heater, they heat this one, so the barium will be released and will deposit on the side of this glass. And that silvery part that you see is, is that, that material. Now, if during operation any, any other gases or ions are released inside the tube, for example, maybe something, some gases are stuck in the surface of this metal and can be released during the operation over time, then it will be react with this... Uh, with this material or it will be absorbed by this material and basically by this way we, we keep a very good vacuum inside this tube for a very long time and uh, the operation of this tube will not be uh, compromised all right now let us have a look at the operation principle of uh, these diodes okay here i have an image of a vacuum tube diode as i have just explained we have heater in the center we have the cathode which is heated by the heater, and then we have the anode, and uh, also we have the glass tube, and inside is vacuum. 
Now, usually we use a symbol to, to show this vacuum tube diode, and this is basically we have negative terminal and positive terminal, and we have the heater here. So the principle of operation is, is rather simple if, if, you know, uh, if you know it. Um, here I have the diode, nothing is connected, heater is off, and there is no voltage applied to the terminals. If I apply the current to the heater, then the heater would start to warm up and also it warms the, the, the cathode. So now the cathode is uh, warmed up and basically we have a phenomena which is named thermionic emission. If a metal is heated, then the electron get enough energy to, to escape from the surface of the metal. So the electron comes into the vacuum space surrounding the metal. And now here we have the, the cloud of electrons. Now imagine if we connect the positive polarity to the anode and negative polarity to the cathode. So basically this is the positive polarity and here I apply negative polarity. Obviously an electric field forms here and this electric field is from positive electrode to the negative electrode. But we know that the force um, to the charge uh, carrier is basically Q times E. And now because the charge of the electron is negative, so the force will be the opposite direction of the electric field. So the force will be somewhere in that direction, upward. So basically then the electrons uh, feel the force which moves them uh, toward the positive electron, uh, positive terminal. So in this situation, you can see that the electron basically can flow through this path. So inside this uh, tube and to the external circuit. Now, on the contrary, if I connect the negative electrode here and positive electrode here, what happens is that the electric field formed between the two terminals will be upward. And obviously the force will be, the direction of the force will be downward. So the electron would, for, would feel a force downward. In that case, actually, the electrons becomes more compact, uh, close to this um, to this heated electrode, and so nothing the the current cannot flow through this because the electron cannot pass through this uh, through this tube. Now, if if I don't heat the electrode at all, so let's say if the heater is off, uh, in both cases, whether I connect the polarity positive polarity here or positive polarity. Um, or, or positive polarity in this case, the current will not flow because we don't have any electrons uh, liberated from the metals into the space. So we have no charge carrier in, in between, so not, no current will flow through, the, through this diode if the heater is off. So now we have seen the, the principle of operation. Let us look at a, an experiment and see how it works in a, in a real uh, circuit. Okay, here I have a very simple experimental setup to show how this vacuum tube diode works. So I use this power supply to, to provide current to the, to the heating filament of the vacuum tube diode. And these two terminals are the terminals of one of the diodes, because this is a double diode, so we have two diodes. Um, here I have a wall adapter which converts 230 volts to 12 volts AC. Uh, this 12 volts is RMS, and if we look at the, the waveform over the oscilloscope, obviously we see a sine wave. So this is a sine wave with a peak value of 20 volts, because the RMS is around 12 volts. Um, if I connect this sine wave right now to the, to the diode, so one side goes to the diode, one side goes to the measurement, and the other side from the diode. Uh, so right now I want to actually make uh, this setup, which is an AC source connected in uh, series with the diode, and we expect obviously to get a rectification, but we see nothing, no, no waveform at the output. This is because still I haven't turned on the heating filament of the diode. So now I turn on the heating filament, um, and we can see that the diode becomes, uh, becomes a diode. Um, so now we have the rectification, and actually we have this, uh, this circuit now. Uh, in operation. Okay, now I want to make a DC, uh, AC to DC circuit, so I need to add a capacitor at the terminal of the diode. Um, here I have this capacitor, which the terminal of diode will come to the capacitor and the other terminal goes to the ground. So I connect this one to the capacitor and the other one goes to ground. So now if I measure, obviously if I measure the voltage across the capacitor, you can see that we have the DC voltage. So now we have completed this simple circuit. We made the AC to DC, convert AC to DC. Now I want to add a load to this circuit. So I use an LED uh, 
light and together with the resistor to avoid uh, burning the LED. And um, basically here I have this, uh, this circuit of the LED. So I need to connect uh, LED to, the, to both sides of the diode, basically. So one terminal goes here and the other terminal goes to the ground. So now if you look at the waveform, we see that obviously we get a little bit of ripple because now we're consuming power from the capacitor. So there will be a little bit of ripple. Also, if you notice the voltage of, uh, of this uh, DC, of this capacitor drops. So when I connect the load, the voltage drops a lot because um, here we draw current from the circuit. So we draw current from this circuit and because we draw current, then a voltage drop occurs on the on this diode and therefore the total voltage over the capacitor decreases so maybe i can show this uh by by connecting the second uh, probe so now i show you i connect the second probe to the um to the main okay so here i have the main sine wave if i the dc voltage will be equal to the peak value if i connect um the load then the the voltage drops if I increase the load, so I add another resistor in parallel with the with the diode resistor, so that uh, the the current increases. So if I connect, you can see that the light of the diode uh, slightly increases, and at the same time the voltage uh, becomes lower. So the voltage of this capacitor. Maybe if I remove this capacitor, we can see that um, right now, for example, if this is the voltage across. This is the total sine wave. The yellow one is the voltage. Um, after the rectification if I connect the load we can see that the voltage drops a bit if I connect more load the voltage drops more and that is uh, that is the voltage that uh, falls over the diode because we draw in current all right so this was a very simple demonstration of uh, vacuum tube diode in the next video I will show you the VI curve of uh, vacuum tube diode in comparison with the silicon diode and we will see how fast they, they react when exposed to high frequency signals. Okay, so we get to the end of this video. I hope that you have learned something new and see you next time. Bye.